Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests Bitcoin is pushing the boundaries as to what it can actually do. There's going to be a pretty big upgrade coming up and it really just falls into how everything is going to evolve for Bitcoin. I'll get to that in a little bit. So we're going to talk today about, uh, first of all, about Sunday Swap, just real quick, need your help. We're going to talk about Taproot, City Coins, and then also uh, I got an email from my lawyer which talks about uh, Puerto Rico and Bitcoin. So we'll go over all those things, uh, but first, usually we go over the market, uh, but so much information today that I want to get out to you that I'm just going to tell you that the market's doing great. We're, we took a little bit of a, of a dip. Uh, we're now below three trillion. What are you gonna do? Uh, we just called that a, a Tuesday. No big deal. Or actually, today's a Saturday, and uh, you know we're down. We're like at 2.9 something trillion. The Bitcoin price is hovering around 65,000. There's no real big losers or winners today. It's a, it's the weekend, so not much is going on. What we really need to focus on is where we're going, and that to really talk about that is. Uh, a couple of charts. We're going to talk about the taproot and everything else. But first, I just need to talk about this real quick, which is I need your help with um, Sunday Swap. And Sunday Swap, if you don't know, it's being built on Cardano. It is a it is the uh, decentralized exchange that uh, everybody's really rooting for because now we can actually have real world utility instead of just staking Cardano. And for that to happen, when Sunday Swap goes live. They're going to do an ISO, which is an initial initial stake offering or an ISPO, initial stake pool offering. And when you stake your Cardano uh, with the uh, recommended stake pool operators, instead of getting uh, paid or get uh, rewards in Cardano, you're going to get rewards into the Sunday Swap token, which if you were around when uh, Uniswap came about and they gave all those tokens away, same type of thing. So I think this is a pretty massive play. And I'm excited because we can finally get some real world utility using a DEX. Well, the thing is, though, is they're going to look for trusted operators. And this is where I ask for your help. And just like I made that free website, Dan Teaches Crypto, so I can call on the markers when I need them, this is the time that I actually need them. And all I need you to do is to vote. And how do you vote? Well, you can go to the website, ISO, ISO.SundaySwap, but all I really want you to do is just to uh, put a specific amount and send it to yourself in your Cardano uh, wallet. That's how they uh, how are you going to vote because they're going to look on the blockchain. So real quick, uh, I'm just going to do this for you. You don't even have to go to the website. I'll show you exactly how this is done in uh, Daedalus, in Yoroi, and Ada Light. So first of all, uh, vote number one. Let's go for D News. I'm a little biased. That's just how it is. And when you click on D News, it's going to say this is how much uh, to send to yourself. We can look for this in the blockchain, 2.365. And you can only do two votes. And also, if you vote for like a third time or a fourth time or whatever else, um, only the last vote will count. So when you vote uh, for your stake pool operator, that's it. If you keep voting and voting and voting, only the last one counts. So for the vote two, you can add whoever you want to. You can do uh, Cardano Paul. You can do uh, CCV, Crypto Capture Bridge. You can do Ape. A to A or whoever you want to do, and uh, just put them in there. So I'm not uh, biased towards anyone that you want to do. I'm just going to be biased towards myself today. And all they want to do is, well, actually, no, let's just put in, let's just put in Ape. Okay, so Ape, we'll put in there. And see the number here, 2.365254, right? All we want to do is take that number and put it into our wallet. So I'm going to start with Daedalus Wallet. Let me jump over there. Okay, so first thing first, I'm going to go into my Daedalus wallets and I'm going to bring up uh, the receive part. I'm going to receive. So I'm going to actually uh, click on share, which is going to copy uh, copy the address. This is where I want to receive my own tokens. I know it sounds weird, but hold on. So you're going to send it right here. You're going to paste an address, which is your own address. Again, you're going to send the exact amount. And it's going to say here, the receiver address belongs to the same wallet. If you proceed with this transaction, the transfer funds will remain in this wallet, yes, and you will incur transaction fees as outlined in estimated fees. Exactly right. And what we're looking for, of course, here is we're looking for that number 2.365254, 2.365254. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring it up again and put in 2.365254. And I'm going to send that. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to send that. I'm going to put in my password, pop, 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 and that's it. And then it's going to send it, and that is going to uh, actually register my vote. And the same type of thing can be done if we're talking about uh, going into, like, the Yoroi wallet. So here's my Yoroi wallet. 
I'm going to, again, I'm going to click on receive because I need my own address. So I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to send it. Who's the receiver? Bah. And the amount, two point, what was it again? Great. Custom amount, 2.365254. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to put in my password and I'm going to click on send. And the fee is, of course, minimal, 0 0.16, no big deal. Send it. Great. And the same thing can be done. I hit a light again, receive. I want to get my address. We're going to ba -ba -ba, copy the address and uh, just click on that. Copy to clipboard. Fantastic. And I'm going to send. Let me click down this transaction, receive data, send data. I'm going to click on send data. The receiving address is my own. Ada, the amount 2.365254. And that's it. Calculating the fees, and not much, 0 0.17. I'm gonna send that, and voila, it goes through. So if you could do that, that would be great. Also, if you're looking to figure out like, well, how do I stake things, and as far as like Cardano, or even uh, Avalanche, danteachescrypto.com, 100% free. If you're looking on the mobile, yeah, click on the menu, go to staking, and there's two sections, A to stake and AVAX staking, and that'll take it. So uh, that will take care of the first part. So thanks so much uh, for helping me out. Let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about a little evolution of Bitcoin. And this is, well, before we get to Taproot and everything else, I want to talk about like how things are actually going to work, because we can talk about all these upgrades and all the things that are going on, but like, it's good to see like kind of where we're going. And this was a post by yet again tech dev one guy to watch especially if you're uh want to look for some for the hope of what's going to happen and what he talks about here is uh it's pretty simple he said look if we take a look at the past uh last couple bull runs we can kind of see where we're going i know people will always, will always say it doesn't matter about the last bull runs because it's irrelevant really what it really comes down to is what's going on now yes i get that this bull run is a little bit different yes i understand However, there are some similarities. I think we can all agree there's a couple of similarities in the timing that is going on as far as like the four year cycle. So when I took a look at this, I'm like, I got a little excited. I'm like, this is pretty interesting. So what he says is he like, like, look, every full cycle, Bitcoin is topped just over the log 2.27, but how much over? Turns out that the linear 5.618 based on a key intra cycle high low pair has called the last two tops almost to the dollar. So when he's talking about that, he just shows us like this. He's like, look, if we're taking a look at the, the log 2.272, uh, we are right here in 2021, somewhere around between 60 and 80, like around 64, 65, right? But if it goes to the 2.27, you're looking at $200,000 Bitcoin. Now, uh, also when he talks about the linear 5.618, which happened uh, back in 2017, 2013, almost the dollar. Now we're talking 233K. So my prediction, of 130k looks pretty conservative to say the least and uh, hopefully hopefully i am wrong so the question then is well if this is what it takes how do we get there well it's going to be evolution for things like this taproot is going to take effect i believe this week and taproot if you don't understand it just real quick it upgrades to a different scheme called schnorr Every transaction using Taproot will now use this new digital signature scheme, adding new capabilities uh, to boost the privacy, security, and scale of Bitcoin transactions. That sounds pretty good. That's exactly what we want with Ethereum. It's exactly what we want with everything that's out there. We want to boost the actual transactions. A little bit of privacy sounds pretty good too, and a little bit of security. It allows for more lightweight and complex smart contracts and encoded contract with self-executing rules. The privacy part, Bitcoin transaction history is very public. I think we can all agree about that. However, with Taproot Upgrade, the details of some more complex transactions, all smart contracts here, will be able to be hidden. So not like it's going to go all hidden, but there's going to be certain parts and aspects of it that will not appear or be make it very difficult to appear on the actual blockchain. So to me, I think that's a pretty uh, great upgrade. And this has uh, been coming on the pipe for quite some time. And uh, we're about to see it and it's going to come forth. So that is just one evolution of what's going on. The next one is, I think, the one that is most enticing uh, for what is happening as far as like the evolution that is Bitcoin and, well, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, mostly Bitcoin. City coins. What is this? So there was a speaking engagement uh, for the mayor of Miami, Mayor Suarez. He was on uh, Coindesk and he revealed, he's like, yeah, 
we're going to give everybody uh, a Bitcoin yield from the Miami coin. Here's what's going on and how I think this can shape so many things for so many cities. You don't have to have it just as legal tender like El Salvador. What if we could just do what Miami does in every single city that's out there? This is a real possibility, and this is why this is very exciting. So what we got here is uh, Mayor Suarez says this. We're going to be the first city in America to give a Bitcoin yield as a dividend directly to its residents. The yield comes from the staking of the city's crypto coin, Miami coin, introduced earlier this year and has already earned over $21 million in the past three months. Imagine that. Little coin helps out the city. People give to it, get the yield. $21 million. What could that actually pay for in the city? Think about all public works. Think about the taxes. Think about the roads and bridges. Think about school and education. Imagine each city doing this. And imagine how each city then would adopt Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and digital assets and really embrace them. This is just the first step. Uh, so Suarez noted that if you were to annualize that revenue, it would equal <laughs> roughly one-fifth of Miami's total annual tax revenue of $400 million. Imagine that. Move into a city and not paying taxes because don't worry, we got it. Uh, we have invested in the city coin, which is on based on the Bitcoin cryptocurrency uh, blockchain. So the city will make the payments as far as the dividends through a digital wallet and will work with a variety of crypto exchanges to allow its residents to acquire a wallet, register and get verified. Again, I think El Salvador pretty much set, set the bar for that. Like, look, we had these problems with these issues, but we're able to get the wallet in the hands of the residents that actually wanted to actually have it. So that's the first part. And then Miami, not to be outdone, New York City said, you know what, we'll take a little bit of that. And uh, first it was Miami, then Austin, and now New York. And I said, this could be pretty big. And what we got here is, it says, uh, it's official. NYC coin mining has been activated at block 37449 after independent miners signal to the NYC coin smart contract. All miners will be able to start money NYC after block 150. That just happened November 10th. Today, I believe it's the 13th. So uh, things are moving pretty fast and furious. And then also, um, I, I skipped over this and I really shouldn't have. This was an article on June 8th, 2021, because I know right now you're probably like me thinking, well, how does it all work? Well, here's how it all works as far as like getting a yield. Miami coin is built on city coins. And we're going to go over city coins in just a second. City coins is built on stacks. We're also going, to, also going to go over stacks in just a second. And it's built adjacent to Bitcoin. You contribute crypto to a city's wallet that the city could then receive as a kind of charitable donation. Mechanically, uh, you send stacks to a city coin smart contracts, in this case, Miami coin or, New, or NYC coin uh, on the stacks blockchain. It's then split 3070 for the city in question and the remaining city coin holders who stack their tokens. This is a process called mining. And then uh, whatever money is donated to a city is its keep, the 3070 rule. And uh, the mayor back in June said this, I had my doubts. Why wouldn't I just give a normal tax deductible donation to a city or organization I like? Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're like putting it in there and going, well, this is for the city, it's tax deductible. But it really doesn't work like that. You're actually able to vote and do things as far as what the city's going to do. Uh, this says government people can signal their approval or disapproval by voting or exiting the system. You can speak up for what you want. You can build a new world. Essentially, it's like, really, if you think about it, almost like a, it's a DAO. It's a DAO. Uh, there's a decentralized autonomous organization for what you can vote and do on those things. So, man, I just thought about this. Really, do you even need city government to really be in there? All the different things that you need the city government could do, you don't need that because now you just have a DAO and everybody votes online on the blockchain. To come to think of it, do you even need like uh, voting booths and voting mechanisms for actually vote for the mayor, the governors, shoot, even the president? I think I'm getting ahead of myself. But you see where I'm going as far as like the things that could be done on the Bitcoin blockchain. And I will say this, I was a skeptic as far as like reversing the trend of Bitcoin being actual cryptocurrency well, the Lightning Network proved me wrong. El Salvador proved me wrong. And now we're, start, we're going to talk about smart contracts in the Bitcoin ecosystem using the most secure blockchain in the entire world. Because, I mean, it's just a massive, massive amount. And to have a 51% attack is, is just 
frankly unrealistic. So if you take a look at all these things that can be done, well, how is this done? It's all in layer twos. And if you're going to talk about Ethereum having layer two solutions, then why can't we talk about Bitcoin? Because that's exactly what Lightning does, or a side chain, whatever you want to call it. That means that you can have crypto, you can have it actually be a currency and not congest the network. And now if you're talking about smart contracts, which we have with stacks, you don't congest the network. And it's the same type of thing, layer upon layer upon layer. So getting ahead of myself uh, again. So let me just say that this looks pretty good. Um, but the real question is, how does this all work? Again, digging a little bit deeper. So this is Miami coin. I'll link this in the description below. And how this works is this. City coins are powered by stacks. And it's a protocol that enables smart contracts in the Bitcoin network. Again, different layer. And you can just have layer upon layers so, that, so it's not congested and transaction fees are low. Here's steps one, two, three. You, mining Miami coin is performed by forwarding stacks tokens into the smart contracts in a given stacks block. And as a one-way process, miners are rewarded with new Miami token. That's about it. So you have your stacks, you send it to a smart contracts for Miami, and you get Miami coin back. It's a 70-30 split. 70% 70 of mining rewards are distributed to people who choose to stack their Miami coin or stackers. And 30% of the mining rewards are sent in stacks to a custodied reserve wallet for the city of Miami. That's where the dividend gets paid from. The city can claim this and convert their stacks to USD whenever they want. So if we think about what people are going to do, like, wow, you mean I can just get paid passive income by stacking stacks, essentially? Uh, sign me up. Speaking of which, this is Stacks. Again, link in the description. Stacks makes Bitcoin programmable, enabling decentralized apps and smart contracts for all of Bitcoin's powers. And again, um, I don't have experience with this, but they, they talk about safer smart contracts and things like that, which leads me... Well, first of all, I want to say this. If you're looking to buy stacks, it's $2.34 right now. The circulating supply is uh, 1 billion. Total supply is 1.8 billion. Here's where you can find it at CoinGecko. You got Binance, Gate.io, OKX, QCoin, all those wacky places. But before we get into the Puerto Rico thing, I just want to say this. If you're thinking about a store of value and you have the argument that gold is great and silver is great, I own gold and I own silver. I love it. No problems with it. However, it really comes out of the point of if you're looking at the real evolution of stores of value, gold and silver can't upgrade. They can't do anything else but be on jewelry and watches and electronics. And that's great. You know, if you want a gold watch, I don't know who has a gold watch anymore. I have no idea. Gold rings, I suppose. I don't, I just wear these, these rubber rings because it's easy for me when I work out. But I mean, sure, store of value. But now people, when they just sit back and go, wait a minute, this store of value is now really programmable. It makes a lot of sense. We can build it on these stacks. We can have these city coins. And who knows what's going to happen in the future with this on the most secure, decentralized blockchain that we've ever seen in the entire world. So if you take a look at that and go, where are things going? The evolution of where Bitcoin, let's just talk about Bitcoin, not to mention altcoins and things like that, is massive and this is where the utility comes from and this is where people start to FOMO in and really get into it so that chart that we saw in the very beginning I think it's just the beginning and I could be wrong but I think that's where we're going let me know what you think in the comment section and then last we'll just finish up with this Puerto Rico and Bitcoin my new state that I live in so this was a little uh, snippet little email that I got a couple days ago from my lawyer and uh, he said, look, just so you know, Rob, the House of Representatives uh, here in Puerto Rico has approved a resolution, RC 527, to investigate and auscultate, auscultate the concept of a block system for the government storage system, as well as the possible use of cryptocurrencies as a legitimate payment method in any individual commercial or governmental transaction in Puerto Rico. So not like they're saying this is going to be legal tender, but this could be a pretty big move for the state of Puerto Rico. And uh, we'll see how it all plays out. And then this is the uh, official documentation. And uh, I can link that somewhere in the uh, comments or in the description. So look, that is what it, I know that was a lot of stuff to go over, but man, I gotta, I gotta tell you that piece right there gets me more excited about Bitcoin. And just so you know, that's like my number one hold. And I know people say that's ah, old, it's a boomer coin. Who cares? Sure. But uh, I'm in it for the long haul, and that's what it is. Now, I, own a, I have a lot of altcoins, 
So um, we'll just see how it all goes. But uh, it makes me more excited about Bitcoin, hearing about those types of things. Maybe it does you too. So uh, lastly, I will just say this. I had a great interview with uh, Crypto Stash. Uh, for about the metaverse. I will be uploading that soon. And also, I had a, a great interview with uh, Ki Young Jun, uh, the CEO of uh, CryptoQuant for on chain analysis training. And I will upload that. I will upload that this weekend. And it's fantastic. If you want to know about on chain analysis, uh, we're going to get it from the CEO who created CryptoQuant. And it'll be a free education here on YouTube and Dan Teaches Crypto. So that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, got a little excited and maybe a little information, hit the thumbs up, like it. Also consider subscribing. These next two months are going to be fire. And I think it's going to be huge. So don't miss anything. Subscribe today. And that's it for, it for right now. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.